discuss cooling load, I mean heating load. Now we will discuss cooling load. And in cooling load, we have to consider the people that's going to occupy the space, the lighting, and the equipment. Because we will have to subsidize with our cooling load. And we talk about some big conference halls or conference rooms where it gets too full and the AC cannot keep up. And you end up having issues. Or when you go to a showroom where they have too many of those spotlights and it gets too hot and no matter how much heat you put in there, I mean how much cooling you have, it does not work because the system is undersized. And again, you also don't want to oversize the system. If you oversize the system, it will cost more power and you'll have more cycling. It will not be comfortable. The system will come on and off a lot and that will be very uncomfortable. I did stay in a, in a hotel once where the AC comes every, every half an hour and it's super cold. So you freeze, then it gets really hot. It's super cold. Eventually, they get sick in that hotel because of the cycling of the AC. So you don't want that at all. Otherwise, it's uh, it's, uh, it's it's terrible. Again, that those question of temperature is really bad. So, size and cooling load, heating and cooling differences. There is a big difference in heating and cooling. Uh, when we do the calculation, so now you're doing the calculation for the heating load. What would change when you do the same calculation for the food? Lights. You add lights and what else? Lights. Yeah, Sunlight. what else? Sunlight. In the sheet, in the calculation sheet. What would you change? <coughs> Infiltration. You can use the same calculation sheet. Infiltration? No. One thing will change in the entire sheet. Huh? The infiltration. Uh, temperature difference? Temperature difference. Oh, okay. Everything remains the same, right? You're not going to change the walls. The new factors are the same. The air are the same. Everything is the same. That's why when you do this next semester for the house, you're going to put, if you use Excel, you can just change one number and everything will change. And done. We'll do it in about three seconds. But uh, for now, you just understand that the temperature will be different. For example, uh, what is the hottest day of the year in Springfield? 95, you say 100, okay. and uh, inside temperature is 75, so that's 45 degrees. That's way much better than 75 degrees. So these are some of the differences. Uh, another kind of difference is we get bothered a lot uh, in cooling with sunlight. Sunlight is the main source of solar heat gain. So your house location, the color, matters a lot. In heating, the color doesn't matter that much, outside color of the house, but uh, the house color from the outside does matter a lot when it comes to heating. The amount of glass does matter. The shading does matter. Whether you have a, a lawn of grass versus stones matter. Where you put the windows matters again. It's all about the cooling. Whether you have a vent in your, in your attic makes a difference. What kind of trees do you have makes a difference. So it gets uh, a little bit more <coughs> interesting. Uh, heat again, mostly from the sun, not much from the atmosphere. Sometimes you go outside, it's, it's cooler outside than the inside. <coughs> this building in the summertime, it's like an oven. Hmm. You go outside, it's very nice and breezy inside, but very hot. Why? Because the roof is uh, mostly metallic and it's dark color, it absorbs all the heat and the building just heats <coughs> up quickly and there's no way, no good way to vent it. Where does the, the heat vent from? Then? Yeah. Right underneath the roof. Yeah, from the, from, the, from the ceiling. So this ceiling has no opening at all. If they have one vent that the ceiling can vent the entire building. There's no proper vents? No. There's vents for the boiler, but not. Or even soffit vents? Nope. No. Nope. So in your house in the summertime, if you just open the, the vent to the attic, and have a vent in the attic, you can, have, you can use natural <coughs> convection to breathe your house and it will be at least similar to the temperature outside. However, the sun gain is higher because again, radiation heats solids faster than gases, right? So when you put that food under the heat lamp, it gets really hot even though the air is not hot. So radiation heats solids more than, more than uh, gases and liquids. Refle uh, reflectivity is how much do we reflect out of sunlight which part of the sunlight causes the heat? UV. 
Infrared, no, UV causes cancer. Infrared causes uh, heat, uses heat. Visible light is good. So we want to reflect infrared or block it, and also UV. Although UV is good for killing uh, germs <coughs> and microbes and stuff. So it's good for sterilization. It's not good for us. Uh, landscaping has a big, big uh, contribution to uh, heating and cooling. And that's why there's a lot of projects in California and in the south to cut vegetation in terms of like adding some grass and adding some trees because the shade of the tree is much better than the shade of wall. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, but let's hit and make a big difference. And that's sort of something you have to talk about when you talk to the landlord and tell them what kind of trees to put and why. And you can see that two houses will be in the same neighborhood and one of them will well, consume more cooling energy than the other one because of landscaping. Awning is one of the best ways to do to intercept sunlight. So, again, if you have shade, you get the visible light, but you don't get direct infrared. So, it's the best way to do it to have awning in your window. So, you, it's shaded, the window is shaded, but you get to see some sunlight. So, Cooling versus heating, it's very variable, meaning two houses next to each other in the same neighborhood can cost more in, heat, in cooling, but in heating does not make a big difference if they have the same material. So let's say we have one of those, uh, some of those cookie cutter houses. The location and orientation makes a big difference. Where does the sun hit it? Are the windows facing, facing north or facing south? That makes a big difference. What kind of uh, trees do you have? Are you next to a water? pond or water table, it makes a difference. Uh, 50 times more from two houses. So that's a big difference. That's huge. Uh, the shades of the tree makes a, makes a big difference again. If you're living next to trees and they cast shade on you, especially in the, uh, from the south side, that will cause you to have less heat in you. Nighttime ventilation. Again, the house stores a lot of heat during the day. If you don't have proper ventilation, then the house will hold the heat and you have to pump that heat using an AC, which is going to cost you money. Meanwhile, small tips, opening the windows in the bottom floor, probably the vent opening the attic will air the entire house and probably you can use the cool air. But where's the cool air? Usually it's at the bottom because cold, cold air sinks, so at the bottom. And it's even colder if you have grass or plants because what do plants do? They soak up the water and they evaporate. What happens with evaporation? Humidity. Yeah. Humidity. Latent heat. Latent heat is uh, heat being absorbed for phase change. So we're losing a lot of heat, which is something you want. There's a lot of houses here in New England that are built right and they don't even need an AC in the summertime. You might have a window AC for like two days of the year. So a lot of houses mm -hmm. are built with this in mind. Probably you do not need an AC depending on the year, of course. But uh, I've noticed, at least in the house I'm living in, it's so hot in the attic area because of the lack of insulation, also the dark color, and where is it, where is it facing. Houses now with the solar panels, they're getting a lot of benefit because the solar panels actually act as an insulator, and they actually have some kind of clearance between the panels and the roof, where the air flows underneath, so the house is completely shaded, and you're using those photons from the light to make solar power. So that is uh, important window glasses with the uh, with, uh, solar heat gain coefficient that is low. And uh, you want low humidity. So low humidity helps cooling, but not heating. So it's really hard to get a house that's very humid. Why? I mean, to cool a house that's humid. So if you go to Florida, you're gonna consume a lot of energy trying to cool a house. Meanwhile, in Arizona, it doesn't take too much. Why? The humidity. Uh, you will use a lot of your cooling power to condensate water and take the humidity out until you can raise the temperature of the air. So you're going to lower the humidity first, then have some sensible heat. Lower the humidity first. So you're going to soak up a lot of the water until you get the dew point. Once you reach the dew point of the water, according to the pressure, then you start increasing the temperature. 
So mm -hmm. we, I lived by the sea once, and you turn the AC, the first two hours you get nothing. Just keep dripping water. Then you can see the temperature will rise. Right mm -hmm. So that's one thing that you have to think about when you size an AC. Don't size the AC based only on the cooling load. You're gonna also consider the humidity. So I know a lot of people do that. They undersize the AC. You put a house, uh, an AC in the cave, and it doesn't cool enough because it's very humid over there. So that's one thing. Now, the solar heat gain is very important, especially if the winters are facing south and west, mostly south, and also if you have skylights. Do not install skylights without any kind of barriers, curtains, or at least some kind of uh, uh, tent that blocks the UV. I, again, I was in a place where they had a small skylight, maybe half the size, but it was just regular glass, no shade whatsoever. That place was 95 degrees while it was 70 outside. And there's no vent. So the window is over there, regular size window, but the, the skylight is over here. So it's really hot from, from the top till the window level, it's gonna be completely hot. And this area is gonna be actually very, it's a bad design, because again, you're gonna keep it a lot of hot air, it's gonna stay there until you cool it off somehow. So the AC was very essential in that area. So uh, what I did is I just got some piece of cardboard and blocked the, blocked the, the skylight. Then I get a little bit more into, uh, I mean, creative. I went to Home Depot, bought one of those uh, blackout pull-outs. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, good luck trying to keep that in place in, with an angle. So you have to have hooks to them and put them in there. But you can get creative, but again, skylight can be a big cause of, of, uh, of heat gain. Uh, also, I've seen people who put the furnaces in the second floor on the attic, which is sometimes possible to have a crawl space. But uh, again, in the same room, they have the compressor and the AC, which didn't make sense. Uh, or, or at least the air handling unit, where you have motors running, that's going out there to make some heat. Uh, annual air conditioning energy use, kilowatt hour. Again, that's from 10 years ago, could be changed. So does anybody have a Central air, central air is good uh, versus window, but again, as we said before, there is no one size fits all. Central air has a lot of, uh, it's comfortable, it heats the entire house, especially if the house is relatively new. It doesn't have a lot of leaks, you can heat the entire house as an envelope and keep it this way. For older houses, probably it's not a good idea to have central air because you have to put a new duct system, and also probably the house is not very well insulated, and you're better off just uh, cooling the air bit in the heat. Uh, with central air, again, uh, probably the AC is sized for the entire house. So let's say three tons. But you don't need to cool the entire house. It's gonna tear whether you want to or not. And you're going to <coughs> cause more cycling. The best way to do it is to do, they have some systems where they have uh, two or three compressors, so you don't run all of them at the same time. Uh, some of the other also options using mini splits to heat uh, some area rather than the other. Uh, again, central house can be very efficient in a meaning that the compressor is designed to be more efficient. So look at the consumption before you judge that. Window AC is usually not that efficient, but based on the consumption, they could be very good use for that application. Oh, yeah. What class do you have? Huh? <laughs> like what class? Like what class? I think that's the second class. Yeah, what class? So he does uh, principle of uh, refrigeration and also fundamental air So central air is a very good idea if the house is well insulated and if you have a good system. Uh, window ACs can be okay for a small place for a limited amount of time. If you go to turn the, run the window AC 24-7, probably you better off putting central air. So think about it this way. Many splits actually are very, very convenient now because you don't have to, go, uh, to put a uh, duct, which is very expensive. Uh, and they, you can have one central unit, like we have here, we have one in the hallway that actually cools 
two classrooms and an office by using mini splits. So the way they thought of it, let's not move the air, let's move the refrigerant in an insulated pipe. Because the air, the cooled air coming all the way from the basement or from the ceiling, by the time it comes to the space, it already lost all of its uh, temperature. So we're getting some temperature while, while it does that. So there are many options. So solar radiation in the winter and summertime, that is, again, uh, for the northern hemisphere, anything above the equator. You see that in the, in the summertime. Sun, so if this is north, the south will always have a lot of sun all year round. Okay, and the west also has a lot of sun, more than the east side, because the sun breaks easily, uh, faster. So you always want to have some kind of shade in the west and the east. So, south. Ah, south, sorry. West and the south, <coughs> and that's why they put those trees. Yeah. On the homework the other night, I was actually, oh, I, I did some research, and it said the south windows are actually the best windows to let in light. Let in light, yeah. So you want the light to be in, but you don't want the heat to be there. So that's why you put trees to have some kind of shade, so you can still have light, but you don't have the, the heat. When you have some kind of shade, you allow the visible light to come in, because it, of course it does reflect, but the infrared is being intercepted. So the sun does not hit you directly. So you get the visible light and you mitigate the empire. So remember that you want to put some kind of barriers and trees. Trees are very important. You want some tall trees. That's not tall that that they fall like upon your house. Mm -hmm. So you want the shade to be cast, but within reason. Or sometimes you can put awning on the windows. In uh, in hot places, the best way to deal with the sun, because the sun is still is very intense, is uh, putting curtains, blind uh, blackouts. Sometimes some money, but the best thing ever to counteract the window effect is what we talked about that in the windows. Okay. Shadows. Shadows are more expensive, are as, as expensive as uh, windows, but they turn your window into a wall. So in a hot day when you want to cool the house, just put down the shutter and it will cut out everything. Shadows are also good for dust in dusty places like Las Vegas or like Arizona when there's a lot of dust storms. That goes through everything. I thought just those old, old, old wood ones, uh, hinge. They don't do that much. No. They, they do help, but not as much as like, actual blinds where it's sealed completely. Okay? So summer heat is composed of two things. Air temperature, the air gets hot. Eventually the air is hot. But I don't think if you didn't travel to the south, you know what heat is. <laughs> you go to Texas or Arizona, the, the air is hot. It's like opening an oven. You can be slammed by hot air in your face. It's your man's place. Yeah, my friend went to Dubai and he said it's like that. Yeah. And the minute there is a killer. I worked there for a few years. You ever seen that video of the guy trying it's to really hot. the eggs yeah. on his uh, I'm talking about 120. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's off the edge. Yes, yeah. bro, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, the funny thing about that, that region, because they have high, high humidity, yeah, so. you drive, it's not ready, you have to turn your window, like your windshield so wipers. Where? Uh -huh. In Dubai. Really? Yeah, this is how humid it is. Because it's hot to you, the AC is on, right? So the condensation in your car is all the time. You have to you have, gotta have it all really yeah. hot. You have to have railings and everything. This is how humid it is. It's a nice car. It's a nice section of the US. Weather-wise? The weather, no, the weather sucks, man. No, but I'm saying like if I want to. The city is nice, yeah. It's not big. So, air temperature, the air gets hot. That's one thing. Second thing is radiant temperature. The sun comes in the morning, heats the ground, heats the atmosphere, then everything's going to radiate. So there's a lot of radiant oh, heat from the ground. Here. You're saying like the half, like the ground heats up quicker. Yeah. And that, yeah. Radiates you. Uh, one thing also about heat: if you walk in the summertime, I see a lot of people. If you don't understand, in a very hot summer day, they wear tank top and shorts. I don't think it's going to make a difference. No, let's make a difference. It's going to stop the. It's going to cool you off. You're better off wearing something light and reflective. Because the sun, the heat's not coming from the air, it's coming from the sun hitting you. If you look at, in Africa, the, the Tawara people or the Bushmen, they wear this flowy, big, raggedy, uh, white cloth because it reflects the sunlight. So they can keep cool and the air can flow. So that's what, uh, 
that's why if you if you are in a sunny day, the sun is gonna really bake you slowly. The, you get a lot of the infrared and also the, the UV. So again, that has to do with the radiant temperature. <laughs> and in some places, especially here, the sun is so in, is more intense than the south because the air is uh, more filtered. There's not a lot of suspended material in there. If you go to Texas, there's a lot of dust in there sometimes, so it kind of blocks some of the sun rays. Here, I find the sun is very intense, like it's really stings when you go outside and like it hits you, especially if you're, if you're not putting in the sunscreen. Humidity is another thing, and we talked about humidity before. Humidity holds more heat. One second thing is it's not allowing you to evaporate your sweat, so your body cannot cool. Another thing, it can condense in your body. So again, feels like goodbye. You, you're not sweating. You go outside, you get wet. You're not sweating. It's humidity condensing on you. Especially if you're coming out of the car from the AC, you're gonna get soaked. So you go outside for five minutes and you have to change your, your, your clothes because it's completely wet. So humidity acts against cooling. It's very tough. That's why going to Florida and Disney in the summertime is really hot because it's so humid. It's, uh, it's raining uh, very unpleasant. Very unpleasant. The clothes will be sticky. Uh, air movement. Another thing, in a breezy day you'll feel better because the air is, is moving a bit from one place to another, it cools you off. But if the film made out of heat is around you but it's still there, it's going, you're going to be hot. That's why you need the fan. The fan will push the air out of your body. Okay, this is some of the tips we have about cooling. I'll do some of them on Wednesday. I'll start here. Thank you.